Okay, class. In the last lecture, uh, we discussed the supply curve, which has a positive slope, and then we uh, talked about the demand curve, which have uh, which has a negative slope. We looked at the shift factors of supply and demand curves. We also um, saw that our independent variable is always price, and our dependent variables are quantity supplied and quantity demanded. We talked about um, substitutes and complements, and the graphs of which we are going to discuss uh, in the on-campus lecture. The next concept is about market equilibrium. So when we combine both the graphs, demand curve and the supply curve, into one graph, we get the market. And the point where both the lines intersect, we have the market equilibrium. It is the point, it is the equilibrium price at which the quantity supplied by the producers equals the quantity demanded by the consumers for a particular product. Now remember that for a particular product, there's going to be one graph. So for tea, we have one graph. For coffee, we're going to have another graph. For biscuits, we're going to have another graph. So equilibrium is the condition that exists when quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. But this is an ideal situation because it is uh, not always possible that uh, quantity demanded becomes equal to the quantity supplied. Sometimes the supply is more, as we can see in the upper portion of this graph, supply is more, demand is less. For example, at this point we have 100 units of quantity supplied and at this point we have 60 units of quantity demanded. So this is a, a situation of excess supply but the market behaves in such a way that it needs to come back to the equilibrium point that is the stable point of the market. So what, what happens is that price starts getting down until it reaches the equilibrium point so that um, the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And how does that happen? That suppliers are going to put some promotion, suppliers are going to put some sale, some price off and automatically as the price goes down, demand is going to increase. So we have a higher demand at this point. Maybe if this was 60, this is going to be 75. And supply has decreased from 100 to 75. In the opposite way, if you look at the lower portion of this graph, we have demand, we have quantity demanded, which is larger than the quantity supplied. Maybe this is 100 units and this is 60 units. And this is a, a situation of excess demand. That people are, people want that product more than it is available in the market. So what happens? the price starts getting higher. If you remember when the COVID, pandem when the COVID pandemic uh, started, there was a huge, huge, huge demand for masks and sanitizers. And the supply became short because it was a very sudden surge in demand. So what happened? The masks were being sold at uh, exorbitant prices. Sanitizers were being sold at very expensive prices. It was because of this mechanism here that price starts getting higher as it wants to reach the equilibrium point so that again quantity supplied becomes equal to the quantity demanded. So there are special terms for uh, these uh, circumstances, for these situations, and uh, they are common terms, surplus and shortage. So the upper portion is surplus, supply is more than demand, and the lower portion is shortage, that demand is more than supply. And the price always wants to get to the equilibrium point, and that is the stable point for the market. And the 
equilibrium is going to shift based on the shift factors of the graphs as we discussed and this is an example of uh, how uh, in practical situations the price uh, change or the shifts in demand and supply results in different equilibrium prices and increased or decreased prices so uh, this uh, question we are going to discuss in the class the on campus class and this completes uh, our lecture number two or slides number two and now we will start with slides number three okay so this is the start of lecture number three and we will discuss the topic of price elasticity of demand or PED. Elasticity of demand is known as the numerical measure of the responsiveness of demand for a product following a change in the price of that product. So, we um, have demand curve per year, supply curve per year. And now, this concept is that we have to change price ko change karne se, demand pe kitna fark aata hai so with uh, a certain increase in price of any product what is the change in demand of that product now let us discuss uh, with the help of an example there are certain items which are of essential use and there are necessities in our everyday life for those items even if the price becomes really high all of a sudden we will not stop using those items and that's why with a high increase in price the quantity demanded for that product does not change so people can possibly not stop using that product for example wheat wheat is uh, an everyday household item for people in pakistan and whatever the increase in price for wheat people are not going to stop using it Similarly, uh, fuel or petrol, we are dependent on petrol for going to work and for our important stuff. We have to travel and most of times it's unavoidable. So, if the mm, price of our fuel, the price of petrol increases, um, there's hardly any change in the quantity demanded for uh, petrol. It is because it is an essential item. So, these... Uh, products have a lower PED that demand does not change as much as the price has changed and uh, another example um, on the opposite side we have products that are luxury items that are very expensive that are uh, not for everyday use for example gold gold is not an everyday item and if the price of gold becomes really high people are immediately gonna stop buying it and the demand is going to drop uh, really sharply so in that case the PET or elasticity of demand is going to be high according to professor Samuelson uh, an economist elasticity of demand is a concept derived to indicate the degree of responsiveness of quantity demanded to change in the market price so whatever the change in the market price PD is going to depend on the difference in uh, demand, quantity demanded for that product it depends primarily on the percentage changes and it is independent of units used to measure Q and P when we look at the formula of PD you will get to know that uh, it is calculated in percentage or ratio it does not have units because on both the numerator and the denominator we have percentage values and the units are then cancelled so let's have a look at the formulas and the terminology used in this concept mostly we use these two terms elastic and inelastic so demand is elastic when small change in price will result in a relatively large change in quantity demanded it is for um, those luxury items that we talked about that if if there's a little change in price people are going to stop using that product whereas demand is inelastic 
large change in price will result in a far lesser change in quantity demanded and this holds true for our everyday essential items which we cannot do without. Here we have the formula for PED. Percentage change in quantity demanded, demanded of a product comes in the numerator. It is divided by a percentage change in the, in the price of that product. Both the values are in percentage and uh, with the help of an example, I'm going to show how we are going to calculate the PED values for two different products. Okay, so we have these two products, two demand curves. You can see that uh, it has uh, a negative slope. This is product A and this is product B. For both the products, the starting price is $100 and uh, at that point, both have the quantity 1000. When the price was increased from 100 to 105, the quantity demanded for product A became 990 units and the quantity demanded for product B became 900 units. Now based on these values, we are going to calculate our PED. This is the formula, basic formula for percentage change. That is new minus old divided by old into 100%. So uh, on the numerator, we have percentage change in quantity demanded. So for product A, new price, new quantity is 990 minus old quantity, which is 1000. 990 minus 1000 divided by old quantity, which is 1000. So it would be 10 divided by 1000 into 100%, which comes out to be 1%. And this is going to be negative because demand curve has a negative slope. Let's calculate for price. New price is 105 minus old price, which is 100. This is divided by old price, which is 100. So 5 divided by 100 into 100% is 5. So 1 divided by 5 is going to be 0 0.2. And a negative sign because PED values will be always in negative. Similarly, for product B, we will calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded. 900 minus 1000 divided by 1000 into 100. So it's going to be 100 divided by 1000 into 100% and that comes out to be 10%. Divided by 5% and that is 2.0 minus 2.0 PT. So looking at these two values, we can say that product A is relatively inelastic as compared to product B because its value is less than 1. Ignore uh, the sign when we are talking about elasticity. This sign only shows that this is uh, the demand curve which has a negative slope. But if a product has less than 1 magnitude of PED, it means it is relatively inelastic and if a product has more than uh, its magnitude for PED is more than 1, it's going to be relatively elastic. We have these uh, values and the terms for them at infinity, at PED is equal to infinity, it is perfectly elastic demand which means that uh, with a little or zero change in price, there's going to be a very high change in quantity demanded. And the other extreme is E is equal to zero, which is perfectly inelastic demand. So that no matter what change in price, the quantity demanded is not going to change. Then we have E is equal to one, which means that there is equal change in uh, price in quantity demanded. And then we have these two values of E is greater than 1, relatively elastic, and less than 1, relatively inelastic values.